Hey everyone, my name is Shane Sexton. I'm a cybersecurity instructor. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at DLP or data loss prevention, which is a broad set of tools, lots of different forms it, it might take, but it's essentially looking for sensitive information and trying to prevent the intentional or unintentional disclosure of that information to unauthorized parties. So that could be an agent running on a system. It could be built into a number of different uh, like products, for instance, Microsoft Teams, and it could even be an integration with cloud resources to monitor and prevent the exposure of sensitive data that might be held in the cloud. So lots of different forms it can take, but at the end of the day, it's looking for sensitive information, things like social security numbers, credit card number patterns, and trying to prevent that from being exposed to unauthorized parties. Because the information that DLP is trying to protect is really juicy stuff for attackers, right? And they've got a number of ways that they might try to exfiltrate data. If we are sending unencrypted emails, they might just be able to pull that off the line, you know, as it's traversing a network. Uh, maybe there are cloud storage or even on-prem storage solutions that aren't configured with appropriate, appropriately uh, restrictive permissions and potentially uh, an attacker, if they get clever, they might be able to reroute or otherwise pull data from a, an otherwise secure device to a less secure device and then have access to it from there. So there's all kinds of different strategies that they might use to gain access to the data and then exfiltrate it. Uh, and data exfiltration, you can make an entire class on that. So the reason this is important there's about 10,000 stories to choose from, but one of them is the SunTrust bank hack. Uh, this was actually an insider threat. So an employee stole 1.5 million roughly uh, customer records and was selling that information for financial gain, right? To make a little bit of money. Uh, so we definitely need to be monitoring any sensitive or PII, you know, PHI, any sort of sensitive information that we might be in charge of handling. As far as service providers are concerned, one of the best things you can do to protect data isn't even to go immediately to DLP solutions, but to use encryption wherever possible, whether the data is in transit, at rest, you know, try to use it if it's at all feasible, and that's going to make it much more difficult for attackers to get access to the plain text of that data. If they get the cipher text, it's not that useful for them. So encryption is number one, but of course, other methods of protecting data might include appropriate permissions, right? And privileges for users' accounts, uh, for the file system as well. Uh, need to know, you can also kind of enforce that through file system permissions and privileges. And also classifying data and securing it according to its sensitivity is a great way to make sure that you're not wasting too much time securing otherwise unimportant data, but that you're really securing the important stuff like PII. So software also should not be allowed. Uh, it sh users should not have permissions to install software, but if they do, it should still not be allowed, right? Uh, because there are all kinds of different communication apps, for instance, that a user might use for data exfiltration if they're allowed to bring in Zoom or Skype or whatever other solution they wanna use for communication. So we should really be in control of the communication apps that users are actually using so that they don't end up using that for data exfiltration. So beyond that, you can of course look at DLP solutions as well, but I think this, the most solid foundation comes from encryption and having a sensible security baseline in the form of user privileges, file system permissions, and so forth. Thank you very much.